Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. This show is all about life transformations and our journey from where we were to why we are doing what we are doing today. We will discuss the hiccups, the roller coasters, and the blood, sweat, and tears that has been poured out while discovering our purpose. It is all about our transformation. Here is your host, Sean Douglas. Hey, good afternoon and good evening, and welcome to another episode of Life Transformation Radio. I am your host, Master Resilience Implementer, TEDx Speaker, Business Positioning Strategist, and Author, Sean Douglas. This show is currently heard in over 70 countries, such as the United States, Canada, all the way across Europe, I want to say hi to Norway, and the UK, Sweden, Italy, all the way to Greece, Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, India, Japan. So I want to thank you to those who are listening from around the world. Life Transformation Radio is all about our transformation. Here is where we tell the stories of why we're doing what we're doing. We highlight that transformational moment that changed our lives and how we use this to then transform others and elevate their lives as well. You can listen to us live right here on Blog Talk Radio Network Tuesday through Friday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Join us live at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can join our Facebook community, Life Transformation Radio Community, and you can interact and talk with the guests. I ask that you subscribe to Life Transformation Radio wherever you're comfortable listening to podcasts. And uh, we are available on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, uh, not iTunes anymore, but it's, uh, but it's called Apple Podcasts. So we're available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn, Player FM, Radio Public, Overcast, CastBox, uh, the Himalaya app, uh, Owltail, Podtail, the Google Play Music app. Wherever it is that you listen to podcasts, we are definitely, definitely there. So on the show, I bring on entrepreneurs, speakers, and business owners, coaches, podcasters, authors, amazing people who are impacting uh, the world around them. And my guest today does exactly that. If there's any questions for any of the guests that I bring on the show during our live broadcast, you can call us up at 657-383-1109. Again, the number is 657 657- Three eight three one one zero nine, and with that, my guest today is Coach A J Lou, who is a marketing, um, who is a marketing guy, and uh, A J is the is is a down to earth guy. He's absolutely amazing at what he does. And uh, we're going to talk about inspired marketing and what that looks like inside of your life, inside of your business, inside of everything that you ever do. Uh, That is what we're going to talk about. And with that, please help me welcome to the show, Coach A.J. Lou. A.J., what's up, buddy? What's going on, Sean? I appreciate you uh, having me on the show, man. Really Really an honor to be a part of your show today. Dude, I'm super pumped, man. You're coming in loud and clear. And uh, I, I'm just happy to spend some time with you, man. I was, uh, you know, we, we got we got together. I was hanging out with, with, with your crowd for a minute. So now you get to come hang out with my audience and my listeners. And uh, I'm super pumped to have you on the show, man. It's, we're going to have some fun. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. Very excited. I listened to your show, man, and uh, glad to be, be a guest and be a part of it. Heck yeah, man. So the title of this episode is In. Inspired Marketing with Coach A.J. Lou. Coach A.J. Lou is the founder of Inspired Efforts Marketing. He is a high school football coach and marketing strategist. A.J. works with small business owners and new entrepreneurs to set up systems online for attracting and converting customers. He also spends a lot of time with the youth 
helping them develop their talents and abilities to live the best life possible. AJ graduated from University of Nevada, Las Vegas in 2010 and worked as a corporate sales rep until he founded Inspired Efforts in 2016. His mission, to help people accomplish their goals and live life on their terms without compromising their integrity or their standards. He lives his life by a model that his high school head coach used to say, I never said it would be easy, only that it would be worth it. If you want to schedule a discovery call based on what you hear today, you can do that at Coach A J Lou L E W Coach A J Lou dot com. It's right there in the show notes. Go ahead and schedule that, that call with him and you will learn way more about him. Go to Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and connect and send messages and tell him that you heard him on Life Transformation Radio and start building the relationship today. So AJ, man, the first question that I have to ask you is why? What is your deep why for what you do? Man, Sean, that's a great question. And uh, it's something that, you know, there's there's a surface level why, right, which we tell everyone else, but then there's the real why. And for me, mm-hmm. um, I grew up, man, you know, single mom. Uh, she struggled quite a bit. She had three boys, me and my two younger brothers. And, uh, it was always a struggle. It was always a grind and it was always, you know, just day to day survival. And, um, you know, one of my major goals is to be able to take care of my mom and my grandma that, that raised me and, and, uh, you know, helped me to become the man I am today, despite having a lot of barriers and and resistance along the way so honestly my why is just to be able to uh show my family that all they did wasn't for wasn't for nothing you know what i mean that i that i can make it happen and uh you know do big things in this world so i love it man and that is what it's all about man doing big things in the world and we always try to figure that out right like what's my big thing you know tedx has the big idea worth spreading like Everybody's trying to hit home runs. Everybody's trying to hit it big. But what does it take? What do you tell your kids when they try to get that, you know, to get that score? They try to get that one big player. That, like, what is your message to the kids? Man, so so my message to my kids is uh, it's it's really embrace the grind. Embrace the grind. Yeah. And that's our motto. Yeah, we, we go after it because, man, it's going to be – you got, you know, we all got to understand that there are going to be days that are going to suck, that are going to, you're going to yep. want to quit, that are going to push you to the limit, but it's all about embracing the grind and understand that's what's going to move you, move the needle, move you closer to where you want to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that, man. And do the kid are the kids pretty receptive to that? Yeah, you know, we, we have our, we have our, uh, <laughs> we have our days, man, you know, <laughs> sometimes, Good. sometimes Good. you got to get after them. Good. Yep. Absolutely, man. So what what the focus of the show is, is about that transformation. I don't believe that life is just a bunch of sun, sunshine and rainbows. And, you know, everybody says that life's happening for you, not to you. And they have all these, you know, big um, parables and these uh, mm-hmm. stories and like all that stuff. Right. So mm-hmm. I believe in transformation. And we're always growing. We should always be growing. What was the transformational moment in your life that put you on the path to what you're doing today? Yeah, man. So I was a, uh, you know, I was a sales rep for years. I, I played college football after I graduated. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Wow. Applied for some jobs. Yeah, I took the took the first job that uh, I got offered, and then ended up. I was always telling myself, "Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that." But I, but one year turned into two, turned in, two turned into three, three turned into five, and uh, you know, next thing I knew, I had I had just been doing whatever, you know, just to make money. And even though I was making good money, even though I was, you know, doing pretty well for myself, I always felt like this feeling in the gut of my stomach, like I could do more, I should be doing more, I should be helping more people. And um, you know, I mentioned my mom earlier she was going through some struggles. And so in the summer of 2016, we went to a uh, Tony Robbins, Unleash the Power Within, and mm-hmm. we're doing the uh, the Dickens method. 
if if anyone you know listening isn't familiar, he basically has you envision what your life will be like 10, 20, 30 years in the future if you don't change anything. And uh, I remember there was a moment where I'm on the ground on my hands and, and forearms and knees and I'm bawling, crying, you know, snot bubbles and the whole nine. And uh, <laughs> the vision, <laughs> dude, it was bad, man. <laughs> you were like, you were like, what do they call that? You were like, what is that, ugly cry? Like, you were like, ugly cry. Oh, uh, like you're <laughs> ugly, bro. <laughs> Dude, ugly. That's awesome. Like ugly crying. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> People in the crowd are like, "What's oh, wrong with this guy?" Dude, I'm telling you, man, it was it oh, was bad. Yeah. I didn't know that it was that it was in there, you know. But uh, right. yeah, it, what I saw kind of disgusted me, man. So I felt like I was selling out. So I uh, came back a few weeks later and and. Uh, decided to quit my job and join this fitness startup company. And, uh, I was, I was their high ticket closer, I guess you could say. And, I, you know, they were helping people, uh, kind of transform their lives and in their health and whatnot. And, uh, a few months after I joined that company, the owners decided that they had different visions for the future. So they shut it down and I'm like, all right, what do I do now? And, uh, you know, I, I, I had saw how marketing could work because they were running, they ran their whole business off of Facebook ads. And so I was like, all right, let me dive deep into this marketing stuff. And it's been a couple years and I just kind of went crazy over it, man, invested, you know, like 30 grand and learning courses and, you know, taking action, you know, working with clients, some failures, some successes, but uh, it's really just been a journey. And I, I kind of fell in love with this whole marketing uh, industry. Very cool, man. I, I've seen, and I'm sure you've seen some really bad marketing, like oh, yeah. ones that would like make your skin crawl. The worst ones I've seen is when I get like a broken English LinkedIn message, <laughs> like I'm a podcast person, whatever I get you on iTunes. I get you many subscribers and you know, all that stuff. And I'm like, Oh God. Like, nah, man, oh, I'm cool. Man. Thanks for reaching out. I'm like super polite. I'm like, no, thanks. I'm already on, you know. And I even had one guy like repeatedly message me every day for like four days. And he's like, come on, please. Please give me a shot. Please. I'll do it for free. Please get I'm like, why would you do it oh, for free, man. bro? Like, oh, man. No. And then it's the, it's the begging. And then it's like, oh, yeah, I can't do this. Like a block. And like, yeah, like, come on. Like, don't don't go there. But then there are yeah. I think, some really good ones. Oh, is he is he talking to me? Like, is it? You ever felt that way? Yep. Like, like, like I don't know if you go to church, but like I'll be in church and the pastor's just talking, and you're like, what? What? Is he talking to yep. me? <laughs> like, but then I got marketing. Like I'm reading something. I'm like, me? Like, oh my god! Like, that, they're talking about me, you know? And you like feel super guilty because you're reading a post, and like that post is about me. Like, how dare they? Yep. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, some really good ones out there. Oh, no doubt about it, man. It's it's the it's the psychology behind it, right? It's kind of the circumstances and the 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 fears and the beliefs and all the stuff that people have. If you can get into that, you can you can create some great marketing. But I think a lot of people are lazy, you know, so they go and beg and do all the other stuff that you were speaking about. Yeah, yeah, man. So so what do we got to do, man? What where do we go from here? I want to get my marketing on point. You know, what do we got to do? So I have a, I, I kind of have a six step system that I follow and it all starts with the who, right? Who, who is the person that you're trying to attract? Because uh, the best definition of marketing that I've heard is attracting your ideal customer and repelling everyone else. And so mm. you, you think about it that I, way. And it, yeah. I got, I got that from, uh, from Dean Graziosi. And, uh, okay. when, yep. Yep. And when I think about that, it's like, okay, so if you're thinking more about the product or whatever it is, more than you're thinking about the person that's actually going to give you money for it, you're making a huge mistake because you don't, if you don't know what this person actually wants, why they want it, you know, you start your show off with asking why, if we don't know why a person's going to want what we're offering, our sales message is going to suck, you know? So, uh, we got to start with the who first and foremost. Mm. And then uh, once we have who we want to serve, then we can move into what's the result that we want to get them. 
And every yep. every business, whether it's you know whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a chiropractor, doesn't matter. Every business has a result that you that you want to get the customer and that the customer wants to feel. And so mm-hmm. those are the the, yep. the first two essential steps. And then from there, you just kind of build out your campaigns, and you know you do, depending on what you're doing, whether you're doing online or offline, whether you're uh, you know, talking to people that have no idea who you are or people that have already done business with you in the past. And you, you kind of build out those campaigns based on where people are at in their journey. Got it. I like that. I like that a lot. Awesome. Yeah, man. I appreciate so it. How do, so, so what I like the most is you got the who, you got the result, right? And, and so – the repelling part is what is is the takeaway. The yeah. the the takeaway of it is how do I repel the people that I don't? I can't tell you how many times I've gotten on a phone call. I'm like, oh, it's this, and just do it this way, and blah blah blah. Like, is it? And then, you know, I'm, <laughs> I, I go I go in right, like I go and ask for the sale, and they're like, oh, well, you know, uh, I, don't, I mean, I don't have any money, but but thanks for the free value, and thank you know. So I've always, like yeah. I was always taught that you you leave something, someone, somewhere better than you found it. You walk into a bathroom, I'm not saying clean it up, but I mean, you know, mm-hmm. like just find it better than you know, so maybe you wipe off the sink or you wipe off the counter a little bit or you you know, but people take notice of that stuff. I mean they yep, absolutely, absolutely take notice. You know, I mean, I've been in a couple of restaurant bathrooms, I'm like, ugh, and I just grab my towel, you know, wipe <laughs> my hand and then I wipe where I was. And I see another guy go, man, you're going to clean that? I'm like, well, I mean, my mom always taught me, you know, and they're like, huh. And then they yep. start doing it. It's like yep. good, like, like I mean, people inherently want to be good. I just take yeah. something to, to do that. And what I like about what you're saying is that you're repelling those that are just a waste of time. They're not your ideal person. So when you create the, and maybe that's why, when I was watching or reading or, you know, whatever that one marketing campaign, I'm like, Oh, they're talking to me. Like, what the hell? Yep. <laughs> like, my gosh, you know, and I felt <laughs> like I had to do something. Hey, whoever that was, I can't, I, I literally cannot remember their name, but I remember how it made me feel. And I heard this a long time yeah. ago when I became a speaker, nobody remembers exactly what you said, but they definitely remember how you make them feel. And so all of my marketing and all of my, all of my strategies and everything is all about, Soliciting emotion because people buy on yep. the emotion and justify with logic. So how does that mm-hmm. all play into your marketing? What is the, what is the one thing that that you see that people can do better inside of that marketing? So so that's a great question, and I think there's a couple things that really come along with it. And the first one is is clarity is power, right? A, a confused mind doesn't mm-hmm. buy, and, and I think a lot of times people will think when they think about their marketing campaigns, they're thinking about these complicated, crazy systems with all of this, you know, automation and a million different things. And we sometimes forget like the the simplicity of what it actually is, right? It's like compelling someone to take an action. And when you sit back and think about that and then you go, okay, who is the person that I want to attract? Okay. I want to attract, you know, small business owners. What's the result that they want? They want to generate more leads and, and that are qualified and, and that are going to actually give their business money. Okay. Mm-hmm. What, what does that journey look like? Well, first they got to They got to realize that they have a problem, right? So you start with the problem and then you got to poke the bear a little bit because without pain, no one takes action. And then right. you, once you've, once you've dug into that problem and you kind of make them realize like, Hey, you know, right now you have unpredictable results in your business, you know, and it's causing this kind of stress and that kind of stress and you're not sleeping at night and your employee, you know, you're worried about paying your employees. Right. So you dig into the problem a little bit and then you start providing the solution. And the big mistake that a lot of people make is everyone wants to go right to the solution. So that guy that's hitting you up saying, Hey, I can get you here and there and on, you know, on iTunes and everything else. He doesn't even know where you're at in your journey. Are you in the market, right? Do you even need it? Do you want it? Are you, what's your, what's your current circumstances? And so I think taking a step back and really sitting down and saying, where are my potential customers at 
in their journey and how can I take them from where they are to where they want to go and not speak to everyone the same. Just like if you, if you met someone at the bar today, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't talk to them the same way as your best friend that you've known for 20 years. And it's the same thing in our marketing, but, but uh, a lot of people don't want to take the time to sit back and do all of that. Mm. Man. Well, you know, that's why I don't mind giving everything away for free because they won't even implement it. I'll give up. Yep. <laughs> I literally, dude, I'm, okay, I'm not even joking when I say this. I'm in a Facebook group. And somebody was talking mm-hmm. about, I don't even remember what the Facebook group was. It was like a business. Or like a, it wasn't like a specific, like a speaker or an author or a podcast or something like that. We were just in a Facebook group. And they're like, I'm really having trouble, like, nailing down my marketing for my book. And I don't know. And, you know, I'm like, well, sh- I work with authors on book launch marketing. Like, let's do it. I copied and pasted mm-hmm. my entire blueprint, the entire thing in its entirety, <laughs> step by step, right? I gave it yeah. away. Two people then messaged me, oh, my God, that was a crazy value. I want to work with you. I'm like, that's great. What do you want to work with me on? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I want to implement that marketing. Well, then go do it. No, I'm not sure yep. I know how. I'm like, it's step by step, <laughs> like step by step. It literally says, open a Facebook group. <laughs> Load 100 people into that Facebook group. Then blog about this and do this and create this post with this. Like I even gave them the script. I'm like, copy this, put it into the post. Then th- like yeah. I laid it out for them. All right, fine. I'll charge you a thousand bucks and, and, and do book launch marketing. And so two people were like, yeah, let's do it. I'm like, oh, my God. You could have saved yourself a thousand bucks and just <laughs> did it yourself, you know? But they just oh, – and man. so that kind of got me onto like, do I need to get into the done-for-you service? Like, do I need to get – like, because you know, I'm all about teaching somebody to fish and feed them for a lifetime. That doesn't seem yep. to be everybody else's mentality at all. No, I would agree there. I would completely agree there. I, you, you, you know, uh, one of the things that I think affects a lot of people, and, it, you know, me, my, myself as well, is – uh, belief. I think a lot of times people don't believe that they mm. can do it by themselves. So even though you literally are like, here, do this, say this, you know, it's this, it's still like that self doubt. You know what I mean? That that keeps people from taking the action. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that's huge. Yeah, man. Uh, I'd agree with that. There's been a couple of times where you know, like you know, you're a coach, like you can do this. Like I can't, I can't. You're like. How? Like, dude, you're good. Like, go do it. Like, you know how to, you know how to do this. Yeah. Like, but they don't, they don't, because they haven't taken that step. You know, yeah. they they haven't they haven't exactly. taken that leap. They haven't taken that 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 moment to really say, you know, I can do this. You know, I think Tony Robbins yeah. called it priming. You need to prime yourself yep. for the moment. Yeah. So that's exactly prime it. yourself. And and what I do is before every big thing that I do. But even before the show, even before this show, this moment, right? I'm looking at everything. I do this every time. You know, I look at everything, making sure everything's good to go, right? I start, you know, running through my scripts, running through, you know, the questions. What am I going to say? What am I going to do? You know, and so, you know, most of it is, you know, raw emotion, whatever. But I've already kind of run through it in my head, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I know what I want to call, I know what I want to talk about. I've already done my research. Same thing on stage, you know? I never go cold on a stage, not ever. I always yeah. I'm like, where am I speaking? I want to see it. Then I walk on the stage and I stand on the stage and I pretend that there's an audience there. Or, you know, people are coming into the room and I'm the first one on the stage. And they, I'm the first person they see, not by choice, but like I'm yep. just running through my stuff and I'm, I'm acting like I'm speaking and I'm doing my things or whatever. Like, hey, we're about to start. Like, okay. And then I run off the stage and then I go somewhere, you know? And so mm-hmm. any chance I get, go on that stage, you know, I want to prime myself so that I'm never doing it cold. Yeah. Cause then I have no expectations yep. of outcome. Zero. Yeah. Zero expectations of outcome. Yeah. You know, if I do it cold, like, I don't know. Am I, I going to be good? Am I not? I, mean, I don't know. You know, but it's kind of like that confidence yep. thing. Like I've done this, I've been on this stage. I know what to do, you know, and I don't want, I don't want it to ever feel new to me. Only for the simple part that it's a confidence booster and it it, it instills courage. Because like, yep, I was already up on the stage once. I already know, you know, whatever. 
So that's just me. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm with you, man. You know, as, as as a as a high school football coach, we do we you know I'm at the school every day lifting with our kids, getting them prepared, and we play nine games between August and November, and all the preparation, all the work that goes in for nine games. You know what I mean? It's almost insane when you look at it. But like you said, it's the same approach. It's like priming yourself. You wouldn't go into a game unprepared. You wouldn't warm up. You would not go into a game without warming up. So why would us as professionals do stuff without warming up, without getting ourselves into that right mindset and state? Yep. Yep. hundred percent, hundred percent. How does marketing or being a high school football coach, how does that translate into it? Does it play off of each other? Um, Are there lessons learned in each that you can use in each of those different? I mean, because they're way different industries, right? But yeah, when I think about it, I've listened to some great coaches, and they're basically speakers. They're basically marketers. So how do you mm-hmm. think that that's helped you and translated into what you do? Oh, man. Well, I, I think first and foremost, um, if you can persuade a 15, 16, 17-year-old kid to buy into what you're saying, you can persuade anyone, you know, because – <laughs> These guys have, especially in, <laughs> especially in, in you know, today's generation. Yeah, not not to be like, oh, you know, back in my day type of thing, but right. just, um, you know, the distractions, man. These kids have a million things they could be doing, literally, mm-hmm. and to get them to keep showing up and to get them to buy in and to care and to work hard and do all of the stuff that. Uh, you know, they have a million other options. I think when you can do that, it definitely relates to marketing because it's like, hey, when you're marketing, uh, these people have, you know, some some incentive also, but they're actually, there's there's normally money on the line or there's like, hey, you're, if you're in the health industry, you're helping people relieve a pain that they've had or relieve a problem that, that's really uh, hindering them. So it, it's almost easier in that business sense than it is with the kids, but I definitely think it relates. Uh, in terms of communication and, and, you know, having a vision and selling people on that vision. Got it. Selling people on the vision. So there's a, there's a quote that I, that I, that I absolutely love. And I don't necessarily, I don't know if it's just kind of things that I've gathered over time or things that I've heard along the way, you know, because we hear so much stuff. We hear so much about, um, you know, like Zig Ziglar quotes, Eric Thomas, Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk, Mm -hmm. Greg Cardo. Like we hear these things, you know, and I don't remember where, but I, but I say it a lot when I'm talking about leadership. And this one thing I, I talk about. And the one thing I always say is, People buy into the leader who is relevant. They, yeah. they will always buy into the leader who is relevant. If you make a positive impact difference on the lives of those that you serve or those that you lead, they will then in turn follow you. And when yeah. I say that, people are like, wait, what? I'm like, it's the other way around. Like, even in the military, you know, the one thing I don't care too much about military leadership, you know, immediate leadership, is that sometimes those around you are trying to tear you down to make themselves, you know, look better. Or Mm -hmm. the leader is trying to stay atop instead of building up other leaders around him to take his position. I'm always under yep. the assumption that and, – and I was on championship hockey teams and football teams as a youth. The one thing I know to be true is that our coaches always, always, always had extra players already prepped, ready for that position. You may not play that position, mm-hmm. but if you're called on, you better know how to do it. You know, And so yep. like in, in high school, I was a running back, but I was a cornerback too – But I played corner more than I played running back. So when the guy got hurt, I jumped right in because I knew all the plays. And one thing I learned was that you teach other leaders 
to teach other leaders, if that makes sense. Like you teach leadership to other leaders so that they can teach other leaders so that they can teach. And so what you're doing is you're building up a lot of – now, it's not like too many chiefs, not enough Indians, but it's you're yeah. building up other leaders around you. And so if one goes down, yeah. another one's ready to take its place. That's good, man. And that's I, always and I couldn't perfect. agree more. Yep. Yep. I, th- I think, I think uh, you know, with leadership, right, there's like, I don't know the definitions of them, but there's the two types of leaders, right? There's the leader that's in charge because they have the power. And then there's the leader that, that people look up to because they're a great leader, you know, and uh, yeah. what you just described, man, is like, you know, the, the, the root, the reason people respect you as a leader, because you help them raise their game, you help them raise their level, which in turn helps them to be a leader and they learn by watching. Right. So, you know, just as us as little kids, a lot of us carry our parents traits until we, you know, gain awareness of it and can change it. But um, all of those things happen. And so when you talk about great leaders that help others become leaders, I think it's just that sometimes people do it unknowingly, but it's a, it's, it's a characteristics, right? It's almost like a, uh, it's almost like a, a personality trait or something, or, you know, I don't know, I don't know exactly how to describe it, but it's, I feel like there's something special that people can, I don't think, I wouldn't say you're necessarily born with it, but I think there's something that you can cultivate and the way you carry yourself, the way you act around others and the way you treat people that will naturally elevate you to a leadership position, even if you never wanted to be that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that, man. My commander, when I was a drill instructor, used to read us this quote every single commander's call, which was probably like once once a week, once every two weeks. And it's from The Art of War with Sun Tzu. And he said, regard your soldiers as your children, and they will follow you into the deepest valleys. Look on them as your only son, and they will follow you even unto death. And so his his vision for us was that you treat your subordinates just like you would as your family. It's not that those kids are like, that's not my problem. That kid's a waste. I'm not going to spend time with that kid. That kid's a waste. That right. It's not that mentality. It's you treat those 15 to 20 kids like they are your own child. And so would you do that to your own child? Would you act that way to your own child? Would you, right. And so, we became better instructors because we never let anybody fail. And so he got us into that mentality that look on them as your only son and they will follow you even unto death. And when you got their loyalty and you know, there's so much that goes into that, but the whole premise is that if I treat them with respect and dignity and I treat them the way that I would treat my own kid, then um, then, th- th- then that loyalty starts building and they know how much you care. And so they're going to follow you. And so it's easier to get the buy-in. Like you were saying earlier, like you got to get that buy-in, that vision. Yeah. Dude, that's so powerful, man. That is, I got goosebumps when you, when you read it. So, uh, <laughs> or when you said it, but yeah, man, <laughs> that's Dude, powerful. I get goosebumps I, I, every time, man. Cause I'm like, ah, like, I don't know, man, with the military, it's like, you know, you got that brotherhood, but I remember, you know, those moments in, um, I remember those moments in basic training, you know, where I, that kid's going to fail. Like, I know he's going to fail. I know he can't hack it, you know, but I don't want him to fail. So what can I do? And, you know, some of them just, you can't help them all is, is you know, is what I kept I'm like, I can't help yeah. them all, you know, because the others yeah. are failing. And, you know, if, if I spend too much time on this one that's lacking that, you know, so I'm like, other trainees like you start helping them and and so it builds teamwork you know that way and um Mm -hmm. and it just i I keep that with me you know every every you know leadership role that i have it just stays with me you know it's the constant in my life like how do i need to act you know if i want them to know me for one thing how is it that i acted it's the way that i carried myself yeah man I, i couldn't agree more it's it's you know, because we're all our lives are is an accumulation of actions and decisions, right? So, if yep. you're if you're always aware of that and you're always thinking about it, you, then you're then you're in control, right? You'll never lose control like uh, like uh, so many people do. Oh man, for real! You ever seen them coaches go crazy on the 
side or like a parrot. <laughs> like, good God, oh, dude. Man. I've seen like um, like TV shows or like YouTube videos, whatever, and this coach just goes ballistic and like throws this kid or something or like takes his helmet like throws it. <laughs> Like, you suck, you know. <laughs> Good oh, God. Man. This coach is a rage monster. You know, you got a parent that's like a rage monster, and he's like raging against the coach. Like, I couldn't, you know, there's a lot of things that I've gone through in my life. I could never be, I'd probably throat punch one of them doggone parents. I'm not even joking. I'd probably throat punch one of their parents. <laughs> like, like, oh, man. Like, you'd be a personal attack on me. Like, like don't you know I was in Iraq? Like, <laughs> Come at me all crazy with your kid, you know, like, like you are nuts. So I've seen oh, those man. those crazy parents, right, or those crazy ballistic coaches. Like, nope, I'm good. Yeah, I got I got a funny story about that man. So when I Let's do this it. is uh, yeah, this is my eighth year coaching. In my first year coaching, I just graduated college. You know, uh, just finished being a college football player, and I remember we played a game. Um, and we're we're in the fourth quarter. The team's kicking our butts, and uh, one of the other team's players took one of our kids after the whistle and grabbed his face mask and drug him by the face mask like along the field, and then was punching him with the other hand. And uh, you know, all of our kids left the bench, and you know, it was a whole brawl thing. And we brought him back, and I remember going crazy on the ref because the ref didn't call a the they called a penalty on our team for leaving the sideline, but not calling a penalty uh, for the kid dragging our kids. So I was I was losing my mind, and I remember there was like a single moment where I stopped and I looked around and I realized I'm no longer one of these kids. I'm I'm now a coach. I now have to be. I now have to act different. I now have to be a leader. And I stopped and I made a, a, a decision at that moment that I would never be that coach again that can't, that's losing his mind. So I, I know exactly what you're talking about, man, because I was there, oh but it was almost gosh. like a. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy, so. man. So, how, so, yeah. so, what do you, so, so how do you elevate the world around you? You, you got your why, you got the transformational moment. You're doing the marketing. You got the kids. Like, how are you elevating the world around you? Yeah, man. So, to be honest, my my biggest goal is to help other people realize their greatness. And I realize that I can only do that to an extent in which I help myself do that, right? Because we can only give what we can only give what we have. And so, right. I want to like. I, I love talking to people and you, you, you know, you might talk to someone, say like a mom of two that, that works, you know, she's a waitress, but you realize like, man, you could, you could be doing so much more if you wanted to, you know, and just kind of like showing people like there, there are ways that you can accomplish the things that you want to accomplish and you can do the things that you want to do. And you're not, you're not bound to this life of, you know, whatever it is that you don't want to be doing. Cause growing up, my mom always felt like she was bound to a life that, she had to do, not that she wanted to do, but she, she had to. Right. And I want to make people realize like, no, you don't have to do anything, right? This is your life. You get to make the decisions. So whether it's the vehicle is coaching or whether the vehicle is marketing, those are less significant than, I, than the bigger picture of, hey, live life on your terms, man. Make a decision and do the things you want to do. Even if it's hard, even if, it, if you fail, just do it the way you want to do it. And don't let, don't let someone think you have to do it their way, you know? Yeah, 100%, man. That's, wow. You put it so simple, man. I'm like, kind of want to go back and see what I'm doing. <laughs> I was like, I was expecting something like over the top and like, you know what I mean? Like, you ever hear these guys like, it's this thing right here and you're like, that's yeah. brilliant. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I was waiting for that thing, right? I was waiting for this one. I was like, wait, dude, that's super simple. Yep. Brilliant. <laughs> like, <laughs> sometimes it's those little things, man. You're like, ah, and it just moves that needle and then motivation. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Man. Exactly. Very cool, man. So what I want to do right now is I want to do a shameless plug. You can plug, you know, websites, uh, social media, links, programs, products, services, whatever it is that you want 
the audience to know and to do. Shameless plug moment. Go. All right. So my shameless plug is uh, if you if you will go to facebook.com slash coach AJ Lou and like my Facebook page, uh, I do videos at least at least four or five times a week. And that is going to educate and help you move the needle in your business. I always like to get your results in advance. And once you get those results, when you're ready, you can go to CoachAJLou.com. And on CoachAJLou.com, it is simply an invite to speak with me. And what we do, unlike, uh, you know, unlike uh, those sales meetings in disguise, we hop on a uh, discovery call, which is all about your business. <laughs> yeah. And we, uh, we actually build out a plan. So I sit down with people. I help them, you know, come up with a plan, a system that they can implement going through my six-step process. And then at the end, it's very nonchalant. Hey, if you want to apply, if you want to implement this yourself, great. If you need my help, great. But uh, I, I, I try to do things in a way where, you know, I'm attracting the people to me that want to work with me and I'm not working with those people that don't want to work with me and that I don't want to work with. So right. I have a very nonchalant way about it but uh yeah you can go to coach aj lou on facebook instagram everywhere and, and uh coach aj com if you're serious about setting up a system to market and attract customers to your business very cool man i think that's that's exactly what people need to do and uh systems strategies i'm all about that because i believe that they're the foundational piece that everything's everyone's missing Everyone wants to slap a logo and a company name all over their websites and, you know, social medias and stuff. But it's like, okay, but who are you yep. targeting? Right. We talked about that. Like, who are you targeting? Like, yep. what's your message? Like, there's so much missing and there's no systems. They're just kind of winging it. You know, it's like, you know, what, what are you, what are you peddling? What are you marketing? What are you saying to people like why are they going to do business with you and most people can't even answer that i have calls every day you know i had two calls yesterday a couple today i got some more scheduled for the rest of the week and one of the questions i asked them like you know where do you see yourself in a year and they're like uh, i mean i don't know probably just doing the same stuff i'm like i don't know I'm like okay <laughs> but I mean, who are you working with like what are you like what are you doing you know yep and uh the one guy just told me like think this is what he tells me I was like, what is like, like, what is it that you like? Break it down for me. He's like, he uses what he tells me. Think Tony Robbins, but like entertaining. <laughs> I was like, what? Tony Robbins, but like entertaining. Like, are you kidding me? He's like, that's that's kind of like what I am. I'm like, oh my dear oh. God. Like, wait, first of all, Tony Robbins is hella entertaining. If you don't believe anything yeah. he says. Super yeah. entertaining. Minus, yeah. like, like if you were watching a video, okay, and it was muted, and you couldn't hear anything, like, even that video that's muted would be entertaining. You know what I mean? Because like, what's he saying? Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, and him clapping and, like, all on stage and, like, screaming. Like, he's entertaining as hell. So the dude was yep. like, yeah, think Tony Robbins, but entertaining. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> uh God. <laughs> oh man, love it. So, yeah, that love was a it. that was a weird conversation. Um, so <laughs> definitely Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, connect with him. Go to his website, absolutely. So as we wind down the show, man, um, give a nugget of knowledge that would trans that would transcend and inspire someone to take action today. So, you know, kind of in, in, in uh, my bio, I included that little quote about uh, I never said it would be easy, only that it would be worth it. And I think when when we realize that as a truth of if you want something, start taking the actions towards it. Start moving towards it. Even if it's an inch at a time, start moving towards it and understand that along the journey, it's going to get hard. It's, I'm, nobody's saying it's going to be easy, but at the end, when you arrive, it will be worth it. And if you can live with that motto and you can, you can embrace that, uh, it'll change the way you view everything. So that's my little nugget of motivation for the day. <laughs> love it, man. I love it. 
Dude, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for being an amazing guest. And tell everybody again where they can find you and how to connect with you. Yeah, I appreciate it, Sean, man. This was awesome. I, I appreciate you having me on. And uh, if you guys want to connect with me, I'm everywhere at Coach AJ Lou, Instagram, you know, Facebook, all that good stuff. And then if you're serious about setting up a system to attract customers, go to CoachAJLou.com and schedule that free discovery call today. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, man, again, for being on the show. Great information. Super inspiring, man. And I love what you're doing, taking the marketing, using it as inspiration, and then translating that to the kids. That's super cool, man. Appreciate that, Sean, man. Thanks very much. Life Transformation Radio listeners, an amazing guest transforming children, athletes, making an impact in the community while helping you to make an impact in your business. If anything resonated with you, please connect with AJ. He is absolutely amazing at what he does and with that i leave you with this live your brand find opportunities every day to live out the core values that you hold deep in your heart and i call this living your brand so until next episode live a great life